This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. We welcome you to First Presbyterian Church this cold uh, Valentine's Day. We welcome you to our worship service. I do direct your attention to page 7 of the, uh, the bulletin, the inside back cover, if you will. There are a couple of announcements. We begin uh, Ash Wednesday. We begin the Lenten journey on Ash Wednesday. Uh, this Wednesday evening, in the confines of your own home, um, at 6.30, we'll do this via Zoom, and um, you're more than welcome to join us. Even if you don't have a laptop or a Zoom, you can do that via phone. If you prefer to do that via phone, let us know or let the office know, and we'll make sure we get you the right phone number to call in. Also, there's a book club that meets in March. Those books are available uh, to, by the library, uh, and you're more than welcome to take one on loan and bring it back after a couple of weeks of reading. That one will also take place via Zoom in March, and you're welcome to join us uh, either via phone or uh, by camera as well. Friends in Christ, let us prepare our hearts and minds today to worship a holy God. Please join me in our call to worship this morning. Beloved, let us love one another. Let us pray. Holy God, light of the hearts that know you, life of the souls that love you, strength of the thoughts that seek you. To turn from you is to fall, to turn to you is to rise, and to abide in you is to stand fast forever. Although we are unworthy to approach you or to ask anything of you, grant us your grace and blessing for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. When 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and willing to forgive. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, you love us, but we do not love you fully. You call, but we do not always listen. We often walk away from neighbors in need wrapped in our own concerns. We often condone evil, hatred, warfare, and greed. God of grace, help us to admit our sin so that as you move forward us in mercy, we may repent, turn to you, and receive forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our inequities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. In Jesus Christ, we have been forgiven. The grace and peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us stand to greet each other with the peace of Christ. You can play the game, you can act out the part, though you know it wasn't written for you. But tell me, how can you stand there with your broken heart, ashamed of playing the fool? One thing can lead to another, it doesn't take any sacrifice. Oh, father and mother, Sister and brother, if it feels nice, don't think twice. Just shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Things are going to work out fine if you only will. 
Shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Things are gonna be much better if you only will. You can run, but you cannot hide. This is widely known. What you plan to do with your foolish pride when you're all by yourself alone. Once you tell somebody the way that you feel, you can feel it beginning to ease. I think it's true what they say about the squeaky wheel, always getting the grease. Just shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Things are gonna work out fine if you only will. Shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Things are gonna be much better if you only will. Better to shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Shower the people with love. Let us pray. Holy God, remind us anew that your word remains a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament lesson this morning is from the book of Deuteronomy. This passage contains the Shema, the basic confession of faith in Judaism. Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that the, the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you, so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. The word of the Lord. The New Testament lesson today is from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 beginning at verse 1 and continuing through verse 7. We're not going to read all of 1 Corinthians, but we're going to look at today the love of God in Christ in the context of community. And so here again, God's Word. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away 
all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. The Word of the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank You for the opportunity that we have to reflect on Your love in Christ. We thank You for uh, this text in the context of conflict. We ask that uh, we might uh, love faithfully uh, the people You have called into this community. Guide us now to honor You in Your Word that we might be faithful our whole life long. In the name of Jesus, we offer this prayer. Amen. Theologian Dr. Haddon Robinson was asked to be the interim president of Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary. The reason he was asked to be the interim president of that particular seminary is that seminary was going through a lot of conflict. Students and faculty were upset. Faculty and administrators were upset. Haddon Robinson was called to Boston to walk them through their conflict. For the first four weeks that he was serving in that particular congregation, excuse me, for the first four weeks that he was serving in that seminary, he preached on this particular passage, 1 Corinthians 13, for four weeks. His basic argument was this, if we cannot model love in this community, how can we model it out there? Moreover, he said, if we can't model love to pastors who will soon be preaching and ministering out there, how is that going to work in their congregations? Haddon Robinson helped that seminary through a difficult time in their life. That's actually the context for today's sermon, Conflict. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at this, this text has been relegated to weddings, and we've put it almost on a poster board or a wall hanging, and we reflect on verses 4 through 7 in a most elegant way. When I officiate at weddings, I ask the couple, they have, there's a couple things they have to do for the wedding ceremony, they have to select two Worship, or excuse me, scripture texts that relate to uh, what it is they want me to preach on. The requirement is, though, they have to select an Old Testament passage and a New Testament passage, no exceptions. And I tell them, here are a list of scripture passages that may be appropriate for a wedding. You can select others if you're so desired. Having done this long enough, I pretty much know which two <laughs> passages they're going to select. From Ecclesiastes 3, there is a time for everything. Now, when they want me to preach on that, I I always ask them kind of flippantly, do you want me to preach on there is a time for war? (laughs) Because it's in there. I don't ever preach on that, of course, at a wedding. I focus on the last line or one of the last lines in that particular Uh, passage, God has made beautiful everything in its own time. The second lesson that most couples select is this one, 1 Corinthians 13. And as I've mentioned, it's, it's wonderful for weddings, but the true context is the community of faith. Paul is writing to the church at Corinth that's struggling with understanding the giftedness of the community. You can read about that in chapter 12. And how best to live out their love in the context of conflict. And then you can read about, in verse 14, the continuation of that conflict. And how best to answer that conflict. 
So let's go to the text and think of this community of Corinth and how it might relate to us and how it may not relate to us. Paul's intro is three verses long. Basically, the introduction to the text is this. You can have everything, and if you don't have love, it doesn't matter. You can be the most successful person in life. You can have all riches. You can be elegant in tongue. You can even have prophecies from on high. But if it's not done in a spirit of love, it doesn't work. So you can imagine as the Corinthians are reading this, I can only imagine he has their attention by now. He has their attention. Because many of them think they have gifts better than the others. And he's addressing that very mentality. And so let's go to verse 4. Love is patient. That word there has long suffering to it. It suffers for long. Love is kind. The word is comes from the Old Testament. It's utilized here as well. It's what we think of kindness. And then there's some negatives here. Love is not these things. Love is not envious, boastful, arrogant, rude. In fact, it goes on. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing. Some translations have it does not rejoice in evil, but rejoices rather in the truth. Now, on this Valentine's Day, we're probably thinking, well, my love isn't like that. And, and you're right. I have been irritable in my life. I have been resentful. I have been boastful at times. I have been arrogant. I have been rude at times. I have not always been patient. I have not always been kind. And so the text holds up a mirror to, our, to us individually, but it holds a mirror up to us collectively as well. It is not simply an individual mirror. It is a church-wide reflection of what love is to be and not to be. Pull out your bulletin covers for a second, if you will. Verse 7 has always troubled me. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That may be sentimental, but is it true? Do we believe everything? It's not what we teach children, is it? Do we endure everything? Sometimes we tell people to walk away. So let me give you a couple reflections on verse 7 alone. I'll try to give you two or three. W.E. Vines, a theologian who says that love bears all things. You may have a translation that says love covers everything. W.E. Vines says that love is like a rooftop covering that covers everything. And everything falls off of that roof. In fact, you, you may have another translation that says love protects all things. I like that imagery in the text. If love is being covered over, then we can believe, we can hope, we can endure together. I, I like that imagery. Another theologian says that we should indent the second two lines. Ha have that in front of you again. The second two lines, the second and third line, rather, sorry. We should indent beliefs and hopes. He says that when you bear all things and when you endure all things, you're, you're responding in a human way. 
first and last. Bears and endures. It's a human response to what God is doing. Conversely, to believe and to hope all things is a God-centered response. We can believe all things, we can hope all things when we trust in God through it all. Now, my response. Add the word perfect before love. Because that's the ideal in the text. Perfect love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Paul is giving the Corinthian church an ideal to live into. It's an ideal for them to live into because he knows they're going to struggle with this just like we do. Just like we will. We're going to struggle with this in relationships, at the workplace, at church, wherever it is that we go, we're going to struggle with this. And so Paul says to us, look at the love of God in Jesus Christ. Look at that ideal and strive after it. And that's where my focus has been wrong all these years of ministry and looking at this text. You see, I happen to read this text at weddings and think to myself, my, my love is not patient at all times. My love is not kind. I've been envious in love. I've been envious or boastful or arrogant. You know, I, I, I begin to self-centered focus here. And that's not what the text is calling us to believe. The text is a God-centered way of living out love in the context of community. It is not simply a mirror unto ourselves. It is a mirror to the community. And the best way to handle conflict, Paul would say, is to strive to live into this love that God has equipped us with. Will it be easy? No. Will it endure? And will it bear all things and believe and hope? Absolutely. There are a couple things I want you to do as it relates to this text. I want you to read verses 4 through 7 out loud at home. My guess is you've heard this so often that it starts to become repetitive. I want you to say it out loud for yourself at home that you hear yourself say these words, love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious, that you might hear what God is saying to you through this text. And then I want you to reread and reread verse 7 again. Does love truly bear all things? Does it cover over a lot? Does it protect? Does it believe? Does it hope? And does it endure? Let us be God's people as we reflect on that, as we give thanks to God for the love of God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious God, your love never ends. Prophecies, they will come to an end. Tongues, they will cease. Knowledge, it will come to an end. But your love will remain. We thank you for the church at Corinth. Lord, their conflict helps us. Their struggles have helped thousands upon thousands of churches. And so we thank you for that conflicted church. We pray that you would continue to guide us 
in our love for each other that we might demonstrate love to the world. For it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Our Black History Month reflection this Sunday comes to us from Reverend Richard Allen, widely considered to be the father of the black church. Reverend Allen founded the AME, or the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Born into slavery in Philadelphia, Reverend Allen was allowed to buy his freedom at the age of 20. Ordained a Methodist minister in 1784, he became increasingly put off by the racist segregation of the white Methodist community. He responded by founding the AME, first as a local congregation and then uniting with a group of churches from surrounding cities to form the first black denomination in the United States. Elected as the institution's first bishop, Allen was a major influence in the development of black cultural identity and an inspiration for future generations of leaders who would use the church as, major, as a major force for organization and unification in the black community. We remember today and give thanks to God for Reverend Allen's life and his ministry. There are offering plates uh, located at the front and the back of our sanctuary. Uh, we are grateful for your generosity. Let us pray. Holy God, teach us to be generous toward you and our brothers and sisters. Allow our generosity to be done for your glory and for your glory alone. Amen. Our prayers of the people today are shaped by the events that happened in Buffalo this past week. We continue to pray for the Franz and Pruden family, the Schaffler family, the Curtis family, the Gibson family, and for their recovery. We also remember in our prayers Lindsay Overbay family and her, especially uh, her kids as they've lost their mother and her husband as well. We remember those who grieve the loss of loved ones. We continue to pray today for those who are homeless and those who are struggling at this time. Are there prayer requests that you would like to offer up today? Prayers of joy, thanksgiving, celebration, or sorrow? Our prayer today is written by the, or by the poet Maya Angelou. Let us pray. Father, Mother, God, thank you for your presence during the hard and mean days, for then we have you to lean upon. Thank you for your presence during the bright and sunny days, for then we can share that which we have with those who have less. And thank you for your presence during the holy days, for then we are able to celebrate you and our families and our friends. For those who have no voice, we ask you to speak. For those who feel unworthy, we ask you to pour out your love in waterfalls of tenderness. For those who live in pain, we ask you to bathe them in the river of your healing. For those who are lonely, we ask you to keep them company. For those who are depressed, we ask you to shower upon them the light of hope. Dear Creator, you the borderless sea of substance, we ask you to give to all the world that which we need most, peace. O 
Holy God, we remember in prayer today the community to which you have called us. We remember that person who sits next to us today, beside us, before us, behind us. We pray your blessing upon them. We continue to pray for the Buffalo community and for those who have lost loved ones. We especially remember the Over Bay family. We pray today for a vaccine rollout and for those who are administering a vaccine. We pray for your provision, not just here in the United States, but around the world. We pray for the people of Japan this day. We pray for those who live in refugee camps. Holy God, we pray for violence to end. That we might understand as a community, as a nation, as a world, your love that's mentioned in the text. Holy God, we thank you for those who serve us today, furnace repair folk and those who serve in police and fire, those who work out in the cold. Lord, guide us as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. you to stand for the benediction, if you will. If you'd like to learn more about our congregation or want someone to pray with you, Ryan will be up here after our service of worship today. Receive now the benediction. And now may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. And together God's people say, amen.